Hi, hello, welcome back, friends. How are you? I hope, I think we are live. I think so. <laughs> Hi, welcome back if you're joining me again. And uh, welcome if you're new. This is Patty Bennett, and I am so excited to share these beautiful cards with you today and several tips for using the brand new Beauty of the Earth Suite. This is going to be fun because I discovered some really cool tips that I think will help you when you are creating with this new suite. So welcome, welcome. I am live on Friday, April 30th. Can you believe tomorrow is May? Oh my goodness. So if you are watching live, you'll see the little red live button up there. And that means you have caught me on my Facebook business page on April 30th. But if you're watching later, that is terrific. Thank you for joining me, whichever way you are joining me. Oh my goodness. Hi, friends. Hey, everybody. I see lots of people joining live, so I think I'm in the right place. <laughs> That's always a good thing, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So while you are joining, if you're coming on live, let me just introduce myself. My name is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Uh, let's see, in June, it will be 26 years as a demonstrator. This is my full-time job, and I love it. I absolutely love crafting, creating, sharing, and everything. Blogging, social media, videos, um, organizing. That's one of my very favorite things about my craft room is organizing everything. Is that is that true? Do all crafters just really enjoy organizing and kind of redoing things? I don't know. I do. I do. I do. So I do have a blog, pattystamps.com. Oh my goodness, I didn't even write that down for you today. So let me just write that down in case you are looking for me. So there we go. If you are looking for my blog and you are wondering about photos and details for the projects today, you will find those at pattystamps.com. I am not going to put these on quite yet because you can't purchase these yet as of April 30th. So on May 4th is when this new catalog actually goes live to customers. I can only <laughs> show you the cover today. So that's the cover. If you don't have one and you don't yet have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can hop over here to pattystamps.com and you can use the request a catalog button and I will be happy to send you one. But if you do already work with a demonstrator, please ask them for your copy. So if you have a catalog already, you're one of my customers, you can turn to page 10 and 11 to find this Beauty of the Earth suite. We're going to be working with the stamp set and with the dies. So that is the bundle on page 10 and 11. And then the paper is gorgeous as well. You know I'm all about the designer paper. These are six of the patterns, and this one in particular I wanted to call your attention to. This whole big sheet can be cut into six panels like this to make a gorgeous card. You have fall, you have kind of a summery, could be spring. Um, I don't know, this to me kind of feels winterish, like pine trees, but it doesn't have to be, does it? This is a little more springy. And then this one is could be kind of fall or summer. And on the back, you have the um, what we kind of call the other side or the B side. Usually a little bit plain, but look at this one and look at this one. Not plain at all. And that one. This one, I left one piece larger to show you. I just wanted to show you the beautifulness of this wintry scene and I think the entire 12 by 12 would make an astonishing background for one of those 12 by 12 samplers. So that's the Beauty of the Earth paper. In this suite you will have the bundle, you'll have the paper I just showed you, 
And then there's also an embossing folder, but it was on back order until just recently, and I don't have it yet. So we won't be using that embossing folder quite yet today, but we will. We'll have a whole year to use it, so it'll be great. I know that several of you have commented that you enjoy hearing about my process when I get new products and about kind of what, what I do to get to know the suite. So I wanted to show you that the first thing I did was just to put the stamps from the set onto clear blocks and just start playing. This was my very first card. I stamped the tree trunk and these two images, and I'll show you all this, but I just want to show you kind of the overview. I made a cloud stencil and I made a stencil for the grass. So that was just my very first card. And I'll show you how you get this beautiful kind of layered look with the tree leaves. And then I'll show you how I did the clouds and how I did the ground. My second card was to do similar but in different colors. So I wanted to try fall colors. And then you can see I've added designer paper and just sort of stepped that up a little bit for my second card. Then I thought, what would these trees look like on these beautiful tags? I love these tags. This is from a new die set called Tailor Made Tags. You can see here it's the largest one. And I thought, hmm, I bet this tree will fit. And look, sure enough, doesn't it look great on the tag? So that was my, my next step, sort of, to kind of step it up and to see what else I could do with these stamps. This one is my fall version. And you can see I've also sort of done, oh, it was supposed to be like a pile of leaves at the bottom. It could also just be sort of dirt or whatever. <laughs> But I did several different colors here for the fall leaves and then mounted it with some of the fall paper. This one I would say would be summer. And it has three or four different colors of green in there. And I also put, let's see, can you see? I've got a piece of vellum here just to tone down that background a little bit, but still give you that idea of all of the nice leaves in the background. This one is my spring version, and look how fun. I wanna show you these really cute flowers. They are called Loose Flower Flourishes. And after I stamped, I decided to use the smallest pink ones to look like all the cherry blossoms that are in our neighborhood in March. And I just thought this was super, super cute. So I just used my liquid glue. This is liquid glue, if you're not familiar. And I just put tiny dots where I thought a flower might go. I used my take a pick tool and the putty end to just tap in here, pick up a flower, and put it down onto the glue dot. And that was my spring version. I also used a little bit brighter blue in the background. So that I thought would be kind of fun for just making it a little more springy. Let's see, someone said, where are the sentiments from? So in the set, I've used the sentiments. I, I think I used almost every single one of them in my cards today. So that's where you will find these. Yeah, so it's called Beauty of Friendship. That's the bundle and the suite we're talking about today. You'll find it on page 10 and 11 of the brand new catalog if you missed the beginning of the uh, video today. So that's what we're going to be doing first. Then we're gonna move into the die cutting and layering with the dies. So I will show you that. Uh, in the second half of this video. So make sure you stay tuned because that's going to be fun. So let's use some of these cute tags. And I thought maybe, maybe it would be helpful also just for you to see stamping the tree trunk and the the top, the tree top, the, the leaves. If we did that first, maybe you'll just kind of get a feel for how this stamps before we actually do a tag. So if you just want to be super simple, I'm using soft suede and you can just stamp your tree trunk and the branches 
be done. Super easy. What I also wanted to show you is that you can grab a darker color as well. This is early espresso. So if you ink in your lighter color, which was the soft suede, you can kind of just do like what we call a rock and roll technique. I'm just sort of barely, barely kind of tapping into this pad. I'm not actually trying to ink it full force. And then if you stamp that, it's going to give you, I don't know that you can see this because it's subtle, but it's there. You have a little bit darker in the trunk and a little bit darker in the tips of the branches. And it may be very subtle, but when you are done with your trees, it will give it a little more realistic uh, look, I think. So again, you may not be able to see that completely, but I hope that you get the idea there. So then there are two images for the top of the tree. And I hope that you can kind of see the one on the right is a little more detailed. The one on the left is what I would consider to be sort of the background. So whenever I stamp a two-step stamp like this, where one is a little more solid and one is a little more detailed, I always use my lighter color here on the what I call the background, and then I use a darker color on the detailed image. It It's really not like a rule. It's not that you have to do that, but let me just show you how it turns out. And then when you are using your set, you can completely, you know, mix match, try different colors, do whatever you'd like to do. So this is Granny Apple Green on what I would call the background. And when we stamp that, what's really, really cool about this stamp, look, I only stamped one stamp, but did you see how it actually has a background and another layer to it? Doesn't that look like I already stamped two things? But I didn't. So that's a really cool effect with this stamp. And then if we want another layer of detail, you know what I'm going to do? Let's do two side by side. And then you will be able to see a difference when, let's use garden green so that you can really see another difference. I'm lightly inking this. I am not like really smashing down in the ink pad. I don't want this overbearing. But if we add yet a third color, well, excuse me, a second color, but it looks like three because this granny apple green already kind of looked like two. And then we add the garden green. Doesn't it look like we have three stamps in there now, but we only did two. So that's how this works. And I think it's super amazing. I think it's beautiful how this turns out. You will get the exact same effect if you do this one, which you can either use like as a really tall tree topper, or this could just be like what I would call a, a Christmas tree, an evergreen tree right on the ground. That does not have to be the top of a tree. It can be just a tree itself. And this one that we were just using, this can actually be a bush. So you could, again, if this is your ground, you could just stamp this along the ground and make it be a bush, but I've used it as the top of the tree. So isn't that really interesting how amazing this stamp works? I think it's gorgeous. I wanted to show you that before we actually went on to stamping on a tag. And you might be wondering if you are new to photopolymer stamps, about this. This is our Stampin' Pierce mat. The reason I like to use it and the reason it is recommended for photopolymer stamps is because there is no extra layer of foam under a photopolymer stamp. All you have is the photopolymer on the hard block. So this provides that cushion that you are missing when you would use a red rubber stamp that you are used to having a cushion layer. So that's why I like to use that. All right, so let's do one on here and we'll also add um, the clouds and we'll add some of the ground to it. Actually, 
Let's add some ground onto this one because I want to show you kind of the depth of several layers of what I did. So here is my cloud stencil. That's what I would use for clouds. And it is in this set called Basic Borders. So it's this die right here that you can die cut a cloud image. Now you can also hand cut a cloud stencil. There is, um, I don't know if it's still available, the Happy dies. You've seen me use that before and I have used uh, the cloud stencil in that one. So that's an option. For the ground, I just took scraps and I've ripped them all different ways. These are what I'm using for my ground. So let's let's do that and let's show you how I did grass. And I like to protect my surface with grid paper. You can use this 8x8 eight eight grid paper for the Stamparatus. You can use the large grid paper that we have. It doesn't matter. I am going to start with my Granny Apple Green and my blending brush. I'm just dabbing some color. I always like to stamp or not stamp, but to just pat onto the paper first. And I'm just going to, oops, yeah. Did you just see what I almost did? I almost just did the sky in green. <laughs> I caught myself. All right. Probably, I'm, I'm not looking at the comments at this, se this second, but you're probably all going, it's upside down, it's upside down. <laughs> I caught it. I did it. <laughs> I fixed it. All right, so there's our first layer of grassy hill, and you could just like leave it at that, and you could just have that be your ground. But what I liked to do was use an additional, so that we get sort of a different, let's, let's do this. I like to do another layer so it's going to darken what I already did, and then there's going to be a lighter one in the background. And this is fun because then look, it looks like you have something happening more in the distance. And then the other thing you can do is, it. let's say we want this tree to look like it's sort of on its own little hill. So let's see, let's do that. And I'm going to grab my uh, garden green that we used in that tree so that we're repeating that color. I'm get, uh, using a different brush because you don't wanna get too dark of an ink onto the, the lighter one. And then adding a little bit, hope I'm not making you dizzy. There, so now you can see, can you see that? So now we have some different hills kind of going on and it just, not that this is like, you know, a realistic painting, but it's a little more realistic than just like flat green on the bottom. I think it's, I think it's nice. I really like how easy that is and how quick that is and how you get those nice options for making a grassy hill. And then we can do our clouds. So I'll show you on this. And it's funny because on my samples, I realized what I had been doing was using my favorite seaside spray, but that is retiring as of uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday. And uh, I, I think it's sold out. So I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to be using that. Sorry, I just realized that this was sitting on my um, my chamois and it was getting wet and I don't think that is a good thing for your blending brush so I just wanted to dry it anyway so I figured well I better use a different blue that's available and not sold out so this is pool party and we are just going to start usually your sky is kind of darker up at the top and it Oh, and I can see, yeah, this, you don't want to get these brushes wet and use them when they're wet because it just made a streak. But that's okay because the sky is not like a solid blue color, right? It has like lights and darks. So it's all right. Um, 
I, that my preference would not have been to have those kind of really dark streaks, but it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, um, so your sky is usually kind of darker at the top. And so as I pull this stencil down and I do another layer, I don't want to put quite as much ink. I'm just doing it a little bit lighter so that we just have some real soft hints of blue happening in the rest of the page. So do you see that? I just have some really soft, uh, wispy kind of blue and white clouds and then it gets darker. I also added Pacific Point on top of the pool party and I really liked how that looked on a couple of them. So let's try, since I wasn't happy where that brush was wet, I am going to try, I'm just going to reline that up. I'm going to take a lot of that off, but just add, not solid, but I'm just sort of making a little bit wispy parts, and look how pretty that is when you layer the Pacific Point and the pool party. So very simple, that's just sort of your first like let's play with these and let's um, let's just make a sample sort of a card. So then let's do one on the tag and then we're going to move on after that to the uh, die cuts that are in this set. So our greens are back and this, oh, and I, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. I want to show you... Um, I'm not going to use the ink pad. I'm going to show you with the markers another little tip. So that's what we'll do with this one. And our soft suede for our trunk. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Rita says, great tips. Thank you. Terry says, love it. Mary, uh, Marianne says, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to do our tree, trunk, and branches. That was soft suede. And the same, uh, what I call the background, with the granny apple green. And just isn't that fascinating how it looks like two stamps? I love that. I don't know how Stampin' Up! does it, but man, that is just extremely cool, don't you think? I think totally cool. By the way, you know, if you are enjoying this, you can uh, hit the heart button. Or if you have a friend that you think might enjoy this, you can share it if you'd like. So one thing that I did, to me, when I look at a tree, it's lighter at the top and down here in the shadows and sort of in the center is where the darkest colors are. So I grabbed, this is the um, shaded spruce marker. You could also go with, oh, what other? Um, probably just jade would work, mossy meadow would work, or garden green. And I just sort of kind of hit and miss. I'm not trying to color it in perfectly. Can you see how I've just, eh, you know, little bits here and there. And I'm going to add that and see how that looks. So do you see how now we have, I think, pretty realistic, don't you? I like that. I think that's a very realistic look with not all over a dark green, but just sort of in the shadows. And if you want to, you can do that again and then sort of offset. I'm not stamping it in the same spot. And that gave me yet another layer, a darker layer in there. Then speaking of markers, let me show you how I did the cherry blossom one. So this one you can see I have the darker just a little at the bottom, but then I have the pink up at the top for my cherry blossoms. So I have used the brand new polished pink. This is a new in color. I cleaned this off so we don't have any more of the dark green. And then kind of hit and miss up around the top, the crown, and just a little bit inside, just a little bit. I stamped 
and I'm stamping up above. Can you see that? It's a little bit higher than the green. So we have some pink and we're going to do it again. We're going to do it about three times. And on this one, I'm going to pull it over to the right a little bit so that I have some pink over there. Okay, so this one, I want to make sure I get a few over on the left. And that, my friends, is how I did the extra pink for cherry blossoms. Isn't that fun? So fun. Think of all the possibilities. So you could do this, um, and I actually did, with different like Cajun Craze, Cinnamon Cider, Pumpkin, um, Mango. You can use all those different colors to get different shades for different seasons for your trees. I think this is so fun. It's it's kind of like, oh, paper dolls or, or Build-A-Bear or whatever, whatever you want to call it, but it's with rubber stamps. <laughs> so that is how I did that. And then same idea. Let's just quickly do the grass again in case you tuned in a little bit after. And we'll just do our Granny Apple Green twice. Again, just always kind of pat off and make sure you don't have a blob. And I want it darker down at the bottom. And then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to go at a different angle like that so that it kind of looks like a hill in the background. Super simple. That's all there is to that. And these are the blending brushes. They come in a pack of three. And that's how you do that. And then you saw me do the sky. So not a mystery there. You don't even have to do a sky. I think this is really nice with the white background as well. So do you like that? Do, don't you think these stamps are really fun to work with? I mean, I do. I think this is really kind of fascinating how they layer and work together and um, just, wow, they really create something fun, don't you think? So let's just look at those one more time, different seasons and different ways to use either a tag or just stamp on your cardstock. So what do you think? Do you like that? Oh, I see hearts going by. I like that. Thank you. Just going to scroll back, see if there was a question or not. Thank you. I am so glad you are enjoying the tips. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Jane, good to see you on here. Oh, thank you, Sharon from Canada. That's fun. All right. So if you posted a question live and I missed it, please repost it. I scrolled back a bit and I didn't see any. So I hope that means that I have explained this well enough. So now what we're going to move on to is to using the dies in this bundle because I wanted to be able to show you a, a couple of tips and how I was using the dies. So these actually have zero stamping. This is the set of dies and I'm going to show you the pieces that I used for this tree. Uh, do, do note here, look at these great labels and they fit the um, the messages or the sentiments in this set. So very nice. Good job, Stampin' Up! I like that so much. All right, so I used, let's just, so that we're not all confused, let's just look at two samples at first, okay? So here's what I did for these. I have a tree trunk. On this one, that orange layer is this background. This is the tree trunk. And then we have sort of a, a leaf image, and that is this one. So let's look at those pieces. When you cut the tree trunk, that's what you get. So that's that one. When you cut the detailed piece, 
That is what this one looks like. Now you can cut it in plain, like if you just want green or uh, just a plain color, you can totally do that. It doesn't have to be this. But what I used was this print in the designer paper. So you can see how it just comes out all like light and dark. And I think that's fabulous because that's really what a tree looks like. A tree is not one shade of green. And then when you cut this outline, you get this piece. So when you put those together, you get something like this. So let me show you. I put down this piece first, the outline, and then I put my tree trunk, and then I layered it with the detailed piece. So that's how you get this. And I have to tell you something funny. One night when I went to bed, and I knew I was going to be making these trees, I was telling myself, don't forget, put the adhesive sheet on the back of this piece before you die cut it so that all you have to do is peel off the back and stick it down. Well, I forgot. However, I want to tell you something that turned out to be fabulous. Like this, this was a, a good mistake. Is that, is that what you would say? So I used, oh, where are my mini dimensionals? They are hiding. They are hiding. Okay, I'll find them. Do you see how this is raised up? I used mini dimensionals on this piece and it actually turned out to be sort of a blessing because I really, really like the dimension behind there. Doesn't it look great? I'll show you side by side the first one that I did and I did not, I did not use dimensionals and it's okay but really, I like that dimension. And I know these aren't the exact same colors, but it gives you the idea of how much more shadow and depth you get when you use your mini dimensionals. I think I have I have a, a partial one here. So this is what I mean by the mini dimensionals. Do you see how teeny tiny they are? And they fit, you can put them in about I think about eight spots I put them, maybe six or seven or eight spots on the back side, and then you can layer it together. So let's do that and I'll show you what I did. And I'll show you how I attached these two because this one would have been nice with that adhesive sheet on the back, but I'll show you what I did. It worked and it was fine. So I put let's count. I'm not really sure how many I did. Of course, this is not a magic number, it's just what worked for me. So that's three. It's probably about six. Four. Oh, let's do one there. Five. Six. I kind of feel like we need one down there. So maybe seven. I think that'll be good. And I just like to use my pokey tool to pick up dimensionals and then to take off the backings it's just a little easier for me it's not a must but it's something that I like so there's our detailed piece ready to go I used my silicone mat and you can use if you would like you can use a sponge a sponge with some liquid glue and you can dab with liquid glue so that's an option but I'll show you what I did this is almost like cheating I just took my stamp and seal I put a little on the trunk I put a little there put a little spot a little spot a little spot like I it's just totally random get the little stringy pieces off I layered it on top of my solid background and then this piece just sort of seals them together. And ta-da, there you go. That's all you need to do to get your dimensional tree. I love this. I think this is so, so pretty. Isn't that cool? Do you like it? I hope you like it. I hope you like it. I think it's beautiful. 
and I'll show you how easy this type of card goes together. This is just a standard size five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock scored and folded in half and then I took one inch off this edge. The reason I did that is because then this this piece of designer paper that I'm going to layer over here is cut to three inches and all it does is it allows me to get more paper out of my 12 by 12 when it's cut to three inches. So when you make 60 or 80 cards every week like I have been doing for customer thank yous, you just learn little tips and tricks and things that will help make your supplies go a little bit further. And then this is a die cut from Scalloped Contours. It's this second one right here. You can see that. Done in basic white. And I really liked how really crisp this looks when you layer this on top of this busy pattern. And then add the tree. And since we already used dimensionals, uh, that doesn't need to be on dimensionals as well. And that's that. That is how easy that card comes together. So there are three green samples. And let me show you. Oh, here's another one. I actually used, I think this is Bumblebee. Or curry. I think I used bumblebee in the background. So that's a little bit different version. Here are some fall colors. And this is where I want your help because I wasn't sure what I liked better. I was trying to decide on the inside because this is a darker color, you know, that we need a little bit lighter area to write. So here is a sample with a quarter panel on the inside of basic white. So then what happens is you don't really see this scalloped edge as much because it's white on white. So on this one I cut it down so that you have that one inch that still shows. So I wasn't sure what I liked better. So I don't know which one you like, the full piece of white or the partial. I, I think I'm partial to this. Huh, I'm partial to the partial. Ha -ha. Um, anyway, <laughs> just so that I see that contrast on the scallops. I don't know. Do you, do you have a preference on that? But um, one other tip. I actually did it on both of these, so I'll show you. On this orange piece, which is pumpkin pie, and on this peach piece, which is Cajun craze in the background, I also sponged the same color onto it so that I got even a little more depth in that background piece. So that's just another little tip for you. Partial, 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 part. Everybody is voting for partial. Yeah, I agree. I, I really like that you can see that color. So, okay, we'll go with that. I didn't do the rest of these because I hadn't decided yet. But isn't that fun when you just use all different patterns and colors and then this might be my favorite remember when we were looking at the designer paper i was telling you about this piece so i used it both in the background and to die cut the leaf part of the tree and i did not put that other this one i did not put this piece in the background the solid piece i just left it so that we were kind of seeing right through all these leaves, right to the branches, to the white. And I think this one is just outstanding. This is, uh, it's definitely my favorite. I think it's so pretty. And if you're wondering, I think, let's see, we already talked about using this die cut, right? We talked about that for the green leaves. I also used it on this one and I used it on this one. So for all of the different greens, I've used that die cut on all of those. And for the fall, I used 
this piece right here. So I die cut the leaf piece out of this busy pattern. And doesn't that just look really amazing? It just looks like real true fall leaves. I, at least I think. I think it does. So that's how you use those three dies and layer them together, uh, die cutting with the beautiful patterns. You can use any of these patterns. Any of them will work. And uh, the tip about popping it up with the dimensionals. I love that. So I'm really glad that I didn't put that adhesive all over the back of my designer paper to start with. I'm really glad that that happy mistake happened. So that's how to use the dies. And then we talked about how to just use the stamps to make these cards. So there you go. A dozen different ideas with the Beauty of the Earth bundle. So there is the stamp set, and we can put these back on here. I always get nervous that I'm going to lose a die. I really like to get them back on my magnet cards right away. So the Beautiful Trees dies is part of the bundle with the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. And if, by the way, I know someone always asks, I always put my dies onto magnet cards from Stampin' Storage, and I like to store them in the Stampin' Storage pouches and I will link to that when I'm done. I'll go back and link up at the top um, or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. I will link to where I get these because this is just, I love this. I love to store them this way. It makes it so handy. All right, so that is what I had for you today. These will be on my blog, pattystamps.com, a few days after the catalog goes live. I haven't blogged these yet. So sometime after May 4th, you can check on my blog and you will find all of these cards and the close-ups and the details and the dimensions and all of those good things. And I'm just so thankful that you joined me today. I appreciate that so much. And you can purchase these items in my online store after May, or May 4th or after. That's when the catalog goes live. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone. I love your kind comments and all the hearts. Did you have any questions? Let me just scroll back. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, on your list. You like the paper, love the set. It does look artsy, doesn't it, Teresa? I agree. Yes, thank you, Kathy. I like that one without the solid behind it as well. Yes. All right, so any other questions that you have? If not, I will let you go today. And oh, by the way, so if you're watching this live, and um, so this is April 30th, next week will be May, I think it's the 7th, right? Would that be correct? That Friday, I will not be live. Um, I will be um, attending the memorial service for my dad. So, um, I will not be here live next Friday, but then we'll re I'll resume again. But just in case, I know you're used to finding me here on Fridays, but just, just a heads up that I won't be live. Let's see. Oh, how did I make the shorter tree trunk? Okay, uh, which one? This one. So all I did was I took, and you can actually see it right here. I took one of my masks, I laid it down, and then I stamped the tree on top of it, and it gives it a shorter effect. And I wanted it to look like it was in the distance, and that's why I shortened it. So that's all I did with those. Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking that. Oh, Cindy, um, you'll have to go watch the replay, but it was this die cut from the Basic Borders dies. There's a die in there for clouds, and that's what I used. But you can watch the replay to see how I sponged those. And let's see, I think I saw... Another question. Did I see one? Will I have an updated ink pad storage list? Stacy, you might be asking about the rainbow order. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I have not redone my ink pads or my cardstock into rainbow order yet. I know I have had dozens of questions about that. Um, it was um, just, it took a little wind out of my sails a few weeks ago when my dad passed away. Uh, and then with the new catalog, getting 450 catalogs out in the mail, trying to get to new samples, keeping up with the retiring list and all of that. And I'm sorry that the rainbow order has fallen to the wayside. It's actually on my list for later today. 
right after this, I'm going to get COVID shot number two. And if I feel great when I get home, that's what's on my agenda for this afternoon is rainbow order. So I'm really hoping to get to that. And fingers crossed and prayers going up that I feel fine and that my husband feels fine and that we will be just dandy. So <laughs> that's my story about the updated list of ink pads and um, Stampin' Blends and cardstock. I hope to get to that. I really do. Thank you for asking. Yeah, Maui is in a few weeks. Haven't done that yet, but uh, we will be going to Maui for the um, Stampin' Up! incentive trip. That's in a few weeks. So thank you all so much. Thank you for your prayers and your kind thoughts and your comforting words. So sweet of you. All the cards exactly uh, that you have sent. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you all. I don't see any other questions. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this and my kind of my thought process of how I use the new products, how I get to know them. And, you know, if things are new or if they're intimidating, just jump in and do it. Mount their stamps, stamp on scratch paper, just have fun, see, just die cut different pieces, layer them together, just have fun with it. And I know that you will be just enjoying that process as, as much as I did. Thank you all again so much for joining me. I will see you in two weeks, okay? Thanks, bye-bye.